300,000 people lived in the diverse environments of California. They spoke 80 languages, worked, worshipped, and raised children on lands occupied by their ancestors since before the dawn of European civilization. Many California nations had evolved into highly structured societies. Among them, one of the largest was the Chumash, living on the coastal islands and along the coast in the area of present-day Santa Barbara. In 1772, Spanish missionaries, led by Father Junipero Serra, arrived in Chumash territory. Believe me, when I saw their general behavior, their pleasing ways and engaging manners, my heart was broken to think that they were still deprived of the light of the Holy Gospel. Father Junipero Serra, Spanish missionary. Ignoring the beauty and complexity of Chumash society, the Spanish set out to convert them to Christianity by whatever means necessary. I and two of my relatives went down to the beach to catch clams. We saw two men on horseback coming rapidly towards us. My relatives were afraid. They fled with all speed. It was too late. They overtook me and lassoed and dragged me for a long distance. Their horse is running. When we arrived at the mission, they locked me in a room for a week. The father told me that he would make me a Christian. One day they threw water on my head and gave me salt to eat. And with this, the interpreter told me that now I was Christian, and that I was called Jesus. The building up of the mission into a coercive labor force didn't happen overnight. It was a gradual thing, but eventually they began forcing Indians to remove from their free way of life in, in their uh, home villages and to be reduced to one central mission site to be controlled. Once a family was taken in uh, to the missions, the missionaries separated children from their parents. Uh, all the little boys and the little girls at the age of six were locked up in uh, children's barracks. So it was work, religion, and work all day long. Highly structured, highly supervised. Indian people were put to work tanning, blacksmithing, and caring for the mission herds. They made candles, bricks, tiles, shoes, saddles, and soap. Labor was strictly enforced under the discipline of the lash. And thus I existed, till I found a way to escape. But I was trapped, and they caught me like a fox. They lashed me until I lost consciousness. For several days, I could not raise myself from the floor where they had laid me. And I still have on my shoulders the marks of the lashes. Hanitil Kumiai. For over 50 years, the mission system, backed by Spanish arms, exerted control over the California coast, crushing every revolt. Inside the missions, Disease and harsh living conditions contributed to a genocidal death rate. The average life of a mission Indian was about less than 12 years. For children, it was less than six years. And so there was a constant need to feed this beast uh, with laborers. And, a con and, and uh, one of the sad legacies of the missions of California is that when people go to them today, they don't even think about Indians. They say the Padres built the missions. That's nonsense. The California Indians built the missions. At the Santa Barbara Mission alone, over 4,000 Chumash names filled the burial registry. Their bodies discarded in large pits near the church. In 1821, control of California transferred to Mexico 
after it gained its independence from Spain. The Mexican government secularized the missions. Indian people were free to leave. But 50 years had completely transformed their world. Old villages were gone. In their places were large Mexican estates. In 1848, after the Mexican-American War, California passed from Mexican to American hands. Soon after, gold was discovered in the north, bringing a rush of miners onto the lands of interior nations who had been out of the reach of coastal missions and Mexican ranches. The majority of tribes are kept in constant fear on account of the indiscriminate and inhuman massacre of their people. They have become alarmed by the increased flood of immigration much spread over their country. It is just incomprehensible to them. Adam Donson, Indian agent. Miners came into Indian communities looking for women. Vigilante parties opened fire on men, women, and children, wiping out entire villages. It was open season on Indian people, derisively referred to as diggers. The Humboldt Times, Eureka, April 11. Headline, Good Hall of Diggers. One white man killed, 38 bucks killed, 40 squaws and children taken. January 17th, headline, Good Hall of Diggers. Band exterminated. In the 1850s, while the American nation was on the verge of civil war over the issue of slavery, demand for agricultural labor in California was so high that the state legislature passed an act legalizing Indian slavery. A company of United States troops attended by a considerable volunteer force has been pursuing the poor creatures from one retreat to another. The kidnappers follow at the heels of the soldiers to seize the children when their parents are murdered and sell them to the best advantage. W.P. Dole, Indian agent. Only 30,000 native Californians survived the gold rush. 10% of what had been the most densely populated Indian area north of Mexico. Upon my last visit to Ventura, I saw the last of the Ventura Indians. They were living in a tiny hut east of the mouth of the river. One of the old men told me they were very glad that I was not ashamed to talk the Indian language. They told me to continue in the use of it and keep the beliefs. If I did so, I would live a long time. Fernando Labrado, Chumash. Fernando Labrado lived to be 111 years old. I once went over to Donociana's house. I wanted to learn the swordfish dance. After the meal, I asked her to teach me the old dances, saying, for you are the only ones left who know the old dances. Donociana began to cry, and I left saying nothing more. Fernando Labrado, Chumash. <laughs> 